Uh, we're going to be looking at John 11, 6 through 16. So if you have your Bible, I'll be reading from the King James Version. If you have another version, uh, I want you to, to read out loud with me. It doesn't matter what you got, Chinese or uh, 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 Spanish or whatever. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing God do exceeding great things in this place. Amen? John 11, verse 6, it says, And when he, that's Jesus, and when he heard, therefore, that he, that's Lazarus, was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Did you know that God is omnipresent? Did you know that? He knows what's going on around the world right now all at the same time. Isn't that crazy? I I always always wondered if... uh, if uh, just for a moment, if you were to think about uh, all the prayers in all the world that are going up right now, and God hears every single one of them at the same time. And, and it's like, you ever been somewhere and someone's trying to talk to you, but someone else is trying to talk to you at the same time? And you got a phone in your hand and stuff like that? And, and there's so many distractions, and like I only caught the, part, uh, the, the little part of what they were saying, but I didn't really understand. You know, I'm a husband, so uh, sometimes I he- only hear some of what I want to hear. <laughs> the other part, I don't know, it was like uh, Charlie Brown, you know, wah, 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 wah. I didn't really hear under what, what they were saying, right? Uh, so, but God hears everything at the same time. This is why it is so important for us to pray. Come on. Amen? Pray for somebody else in your life. Amen? God hears your prayers. Amen? And God hears their prayer too. Amen? And sometimes we might be praying for the same thing, It's just going to manifest in a different way. Amen? Amen? Amen. Don't get so stuck trying to make it look like you want it to look because Jesus might wait two extra days. Okay? Amen? Amen? Amen. So just say it with me. Say, uh, say, I trust you, Jesus. Even if I got to wait, I trust you. Right? Okay, so verse 7. And then after, he saith to, uh, to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. Verse 8, And his disciples said unto, say unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou hither again? Question? Right? Did you know uh, uh, Jesus didn't say, let's go where Lazarus, Lazarus was in Bethany. Jesus said, let's go to Judea. Do you know what, you know what Judea means when you, when you break that down? In the Greek it says, it means, uh, uh, he shall be praised. That's what it means. Okay? It's a, a different place than Bethany. Lazarus was in Bethany, okay, but Jesus was going to Judea, okay? Because he wants to be praised. He wants us to praise him. Amen? And we know the rest of the story because we can go backwards, right? And we, we already know what's going to happen. Lazarus is going to come out of the grave and he will be praised. Amen? Not Lazarus, but God. God will be praised. How many of you know that sometimes in our life we have to get to a place where we're praising God more than the circumstances? Amen? Amen? Because Jesus is going to do what Jesus is going to do. Amen? Come on. And sometimes he's working on me more than he's working on them. Amen? And so I'm going to trust him that he's going to get the praise. He's going to get the glory. Amen? Amen? Okay, I'm sorry. That was a rabbit trail. I didn't mean to go there too far. And Jesus answered in verse 9. There's a question. Jesus, are you going to go? They're going to stone you. Are you going to go there anyways? Why are you going there? Right? And Jesus answered and said, Are there not 12 hours a day? Sometimes God will give you a question to answer a question. Right? He says, Are there not 12 hours in a day? Right? 12 hours in a day. The sun come up, the sun go down. Right? From the rising of the sun. To the, there's a song about that. I can't, I can't get it right now. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the saints, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen? So, there are there not 12 hours in a day? If any man walk in a day, he stumbled not because he seeth the light of the world, of the world, the light of the world, the sunlight, okay? Uh, uh, and, then, and then it says, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I just like to read my notes, okay? So I have a note here and it says, what should we be doing today in this moment, in this present moment? What should we be doing today with our life, right? What should we be doing? I know we're in church right now, Okay? But when you leave here, what are you going to do today? Same thing I did last, yesterday. <laughs> what did you do yesterday? I sat on the couch all day long. I was thinking about my problems all day long. Okay? I, wasn't, I wasn't in the Word. I wasn't in worship. And I, 
certainly wasn't encouraging somebody else because I'm not in, in a position to do that right now because I've got so much trouble. See, in God's presence, though, we serve a God who is omnipresent and He's inviting you into His presence. Amen? How about if we just tr try this? This week, okay? Why don't we just try to get in the presence of God every day? Why don't we try that? Hey, 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 oh God, oh God. God's like, <laughs> I heard that yesterday. <laughs> I know, but this thing, there's nothing changed. I just want to be in your presence today. Remember, Mary chose the good part. She chose the good part, amen? She chose the good part. Uh, all the serving and all the stuff that you do in your life, but Mary chose the good part. And you know what? You can too. Turn to your neighbor right now and say, you can too. You can too, right? Uh, so, so, <laughs> so <laughs> verse 11, These things said he, and after he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. But I go that I may awake him out of sleep. A amen? So, 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 and his disciples, <laughs> then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he doeth well. In verse 13, Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought, say that with me, they thought, they thought, they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest and sleep. Uh, uh, in my version of the Bible, it's, it's more like this. Whatever, Jesus. <laughs> I don't understand. Maybe we could say it together. Say, Jesus, Jesus. I don't understand. I don't understand. See, see, because we, we pick on the disciples right here because we know the rest of the story. We understand what happens in the end. The disciples didn't know that was what was going to happen. So, so they didn't understand what Jesus was saying. Newsflash. Sometimes you don't understand what he's doing. Amen? Amen? Sometimes, maybe we should say that together. Say, Jesus, I don't understand. Whatever, Jesus. <laughs> you know, and so, and so, so, uh, so, so, verse 14, then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Verse 15, and I am glad, he says, for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Let's, let's read it again, right? Let's read it together. Verse 15, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Jesus knew that he was surrounded by unbelief, right? And yet he said, nevertheless. And then said, uh, how many of you are glad for delays? <laughs> Come on, be serious. No, I'm not. <laughs> we don't really like delays, right? Uh, we, 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 we don't like the word patience. Uh, my, my little, uh, 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 there's this uh, a little girl uh, in my life that comes in my life every once in a while. She's a, uh, the granddaughter of someone uh, close to me. And uh, the, the other day, uh, uh, she had lost her patience, so I started singing that song. Have patience, have patience, don't be in such a hurry. Remember, remember all the time someone else had patience for you, right? So, so, so sometimes we just have to be patient, right? And let Jesus do what he's going to do, how he's going to do it. Amen? Right? In verse 16, verse 16, then said Thomas, which is called Didymus. I, I always look at that word, that word right there. Uh, and I, I'm a phonetic person, right? I like words. But I always say, I always pronounce it, did he miss? <laughs> okay, it's a did he miss, but did he miss? You know, Thomas, right? Uh, unto his fellow disciples, he didn't say unto Jesus, he said unto someone else, he said, let's also go that we may die with him. Let's also go that we may die, that we may die with him. See, see so, so was he prophesying? <laughs> or was he just talking? Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask that you touch us from the top of our heads to the sole of our feet. Open our eyes, our ears, our heart, our mind, that we can see, hear, know, and understand something brand new from the Word of God today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. 
Thomas? Did he miss? I mean, if I was Thomas, I would want Jesus to edit that little piece out of the Bible. <laughs> I would want him to take it out, right? I, I, so, so, so Jesus, uh, uh, Thomas is over here praying, Jesus, when you're, you're the living word, you're the word of God. Can you just edit, edit this out of the Bible? Take this statement away. But, but Thomas, we know Thomas. Thomas, this wasn't the only time he said something kind of uh, crazy before, right? Uh, later on, he said something else even more crazy. He said, he, all the disciples had seen Jesus and he was alive. And Thomas says, unless I stick my finger in the, in the nail-pierced hands, unless I thrust my hand up into his uh, uh, side, I, I won't believe, he said. He said that too. He said it uh, two times that we know of. He said things that were a little bit crazy, right? For someone who watched Jesus' miracles, walked with him. He saw the loaves and the fishes. He said, he said, uh, he said, uh, he said, uh, oh, uh, Thomas in the Greek, you know what it means? It means twin. 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 I, 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 I don't think it means that he had a twin brother. I think that he's a little bit like me and a little bit like you. Okay? And, and so, so I think that's why uh, Thomas said the things. I think that's why Jesus left that in the Bible. It's so that we could know that there's somebody else who struggles knowing what Jesus is going to do just like you and just like me. Amen? Amen? So in John 20, 27 through 29, uh, uh, this is where, where Thomas said that. He said, unless I... I uh, I thrust, but, but when he gets right down to it, when he gets right in the presence of God, Thomas changes his story, and he says, he says, he says in uh, uh, John 20, verse 28, uh, he said, uh, my Lord and my God, those are a capital L Lord and a capital G God. He, when he got in the presence of God, Thomas changed his tune a little bit. Amen? This helped me to understand that I too need to be in the presence of God. Amen? I too need to be in the presence of God. Because if I get in the presence of God, something is going to change. Say it with me. Something is going to change. Amen? Something's going to change. And so, yeah, he went from uh, unbelieving Thomas to believing Thomas. That's what he did. In the presence of God, he, he changed from unbelief to belief. He changed. Amen? And, and, so, and so Jesus says in verse 29, He said, uh, John 20, verse 29, He said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen Me, thou hast believed, blessed are they that have not seen and yet believed. Amen? So I want to turn to your neighbor and just say, you look blessed. You look blessed. You look, you look blessed. Uh, you look blessed. Uh, this, this present moment in our life changes somebody else's future. Amen? This present moment in our life changes somebody else's future. Amen? That's, this, is, this is putting gravity or weight to the moment, right? This is not just another church service. This is not just another sermon. This is just another, not another Bible verse. This is a moment in the presence of God that will change somebody else in the future. Amen? Amen. Okay. I wrote this when I was... Re I wrote this down and it says, uh, I, know the, the, I, I know the lies you live. I feel like God is speaking was speaking to me when I wrote that. I know the lies you live and call it faith. See, see, faith is not a masquerade party. It's not a, 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 a mask that I put on. It's, it's, the, it's the way I feel about it in my heart. That's what faith is. Faith is uh, believing in your heart that God sent His Son Jesus. It's easy to believe for salvation, right? You have to believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. <laughs> it never happened before. Jesus, and it ain't never happened afterwards, but we've got to believe that, right? 
We've got to believe that God, the Holy Spirit, over, overshadowed Mary and, and, and fertilized an egg and made a son called Jesus come up out of a, a woman, a virgin, never known a man before. And then, and then he walked on the planet called Earth, did many, many miracles, was, uh, was killed, uh, uh, whipped, and, 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 and uh, abused, and spit on, and t- uh, flesh torn from his body. And he was uh, put on a cross, and he died, and he bled and died for us. He didn't stay dead. Nicodemus and uh, uh, Joseph uh, took and carried him to the tomb and rolled a stone in front of it. But three days later, he got up out of there, right? He rose again. And then he didn't just rise again and walk around and be seen by over 500 people. He went on uh, uh, some 40 days later, right, to rise on a, a cloud elevator right up to heaven. They saw him go, zoop, right up to heaven. Angel came and tapped on his shoulder and said, ye men, in, uh, ye men of Galilee, he said, he said uh, why do you look? <laughs> he is risen. He is not here. He said, but go, right? Go, go to Jerusalem, tarry there. And when power comes, right? Wait for the power, right? And then go. Most of us haven't waited for the power in the secret place so that we can go and change the world. Amen? Amen. But if we get to a place where we start getting in the presence of God, that's the secret place. The secret sauce of your life is the presence of God so that we can go and make a difference in the world around us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Say, say it with me. Say, God, I want to make a difference in the world around me. I want you to take what's in me and touch another life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See, that's called faith foothold. I got I to gotta have a foothold. Like if you're climbing a mountain, right, you got to have uh, uh, three points of contact, they say, right? If you're hanging by one finger, you're not going to hang for very long, Okay. But if you got three points of contact, you've okay? you, you got to have a foothold, right? You've got to have something to anchor your life to. Something to anchor your decision-making uh, to. You gotta, uh, some of us Christians might call it the Bible, okay? Uh, we, might, we might call it uh, faith foothold. It's like, I, I don't feel like reading my Bible today because I'm so tired. Well, read anyways. I don't, I don't feel like going to church because, well, it's, it's this or that. Go anyways. Right? I don't feel like worshiping God right now because He ain't done nothing for me lately. Do it anyways. You've got to have a foothold in your life. The devil wants to have a, a stronghold in your life, but why don't you give faith a foothold? Amen? Why don't you start calling on the name of Jesus more? Okay, that, that was probably too hard. Faith's foothold lies in three simple little things. I want to give you three things, okay? And I'm almost going to shut up after that. Almost. Because I have something else I want to say at the end. But there's three little things I want to give you, okay? Uh, Number one thing, it's a choice. It's your choice. Ain't nobody going to make you do nothing. Do you know, know, if you want to love somebody, you've got to decide to love somebody. You've got to make a decision to love. Jesus made a decision to love you. He, he didn't have to love you. God, God sent Jesus. It's really great when you look at it like this because uh, Jesus had to align himself with God's will. Okay, uh, God was not willing that any should perish, so he sent his son Jesus. Jesus had to agree with that and go through the pain and the suffering of the cross and go through all that he went through, all the despise, all the shame, all the, the dirty feet, all of that stuff. He'd take off the glory of heaven and he had to come down here, humble himself, become obedient to death. He had to align himself with, with the will of God. It wasn't an easy task. It wasn't something he's like, oh, Jesus died for me. Great. No, he literally died for you. He literally bled. He, he literally said, it is finished on the cross. He gave his life for you. What are you, what are you giving, Jesus? I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, I'm blessed and highly favored of the Lord. And go out into the world, do everything you want to do, and never do nothing for Him. Never give your life, never read a Bible, never get on your knees and actually pray for somebody. Where, where are our intercessors in the church today? Where are the people who are more concerned about somebody else than they are about their own feelings or their own needs or wants or desires or their future? Where's my money, Jesus? Where are the people? who would give an hour of prayer 
and say, and never even ask for one thing from Jesus. Just, just praying for somebody else. Some of us husbands have to do that, right? We've got to pray for our wives. We've got to pray for somebody else. We've got to say, Jesus, I don't, know, I don't know what she's doing right now, but I want you to touch her heart, touch her life, strengthen her, God, in every way. Help her to put up with me because I know it's hard. It's hard loving me. It's hard loving me. It's hard loving you. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Jesus loves me. It's hard. I gotta make a decision. I gotta. I got I gotta make a decision right now to align myself with a surrendered life. I surrender all. I surrender all till I go back out and pick it back up again. All to you. No, all to God. I give you all of my life. Everything I understand and everything I don't understand. All the good stuff and all the bad stuff too. I, I give you all of my life, God. My heart. Boop, 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 boop. This heart beats for you, Jesus. This mind. Be, you, you know, you know uh, I, I was thinking about the other day, I was, I was crying to God a little bit because, you know, being pastor is hard. Not many people encourage the pastor very often. Some people don't even pray for the pastor. They just come to get a meal, right? They come to get fed, and so they can go back out and do a, uh, be a little encouraged, right? And they don't even read their Bibles. <laughs> I say, read your Bible, but you don't read your Bible. You just keep on doing what you always did, and you expect a different result. But, 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 so, so I got a little discouraged, right? And God sent someone to encourage me. It was that prayer on Tuesday night when I got encouraged. Amen? Do you know how many hours I have to get on my knees and pray and how many times I, I lay on the carpet and snot all over the carpet? Uh, it, it, not even for you. I'm for myself. I'm trying to lay my flesh down. I'm like, oh, I don't know. come on, I'm so I'm going to be like everyone else. It's a calling. It's a calling. It's just a calling. Stop crying about it. I mean, just nine to five, and then I could go home, right? And watch a TV or something, right? Uh, I, I go on vacation sometimes. I think it's good to go on vacation sometimes. But you know, uh, it, wah, wah, wah. I, I said this one time. I said, I said if you've got a career, it's hard work. But if you've got a calling, you just need to listen. But I'm going to tell you, when you listen, you have to be obedient also. Amen? You've got to be obedient also. It's not just listening to the Word of God. It's living the Word of God too. Amen? It's living that out in your life, right? It's a choice, though. It's a choice. It's a decision. It's a choice. Say it with me really loud. Uh, actually, turn to your neighbor right now and just look at him and tur tilt your head just a little bit like this and say, It's a choice. It's a choice, right? And so every decision springs from your belief. When you make a decision, it comes up out of something you believe to be true, okay? Believe to be right. That decision you make is based on a belief that you have. How many know someone has got some wrong belief? Amen. Amen? And so, and so uh, uh, if you're going to make a new decision, you've got to change a belief. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Uh, nobody likes me. <laughs> nobody loves me. And so I make decisions based on that belief. Yeah. Right? And so, so <laughs> how about this? Uh, you know, my grandkids, uh, the other day, uh, uh, they came over for Thanksgiving, and, and uh, my, my, my little granddaughter... She's building a fort in the, in the living room, okay? Lots of people were there. And so she puts the two chairs together. She takes a blanket, and she throws so she's, Mama, can you help me? So I helped her put the blanket over, you know? And then, and then she's putting a pillow on each end, right? And, and, and then the fort would be complete. So she takes the pillow, and she's over there. <clears throat> She'd walk away, and it'd fall over. You know, because you've got to have the pillow leaning in those a little bit. But she, she says to me, she says, I can't. I can't do it. And she starts crying, throwing a fit. And I said, what do you mean you can't do it? You mean it's not working the way you're doing it now? And I said, I said put the pillow a little closer and then push it. And so she did it. She did it. And, it, and I said, see, 
you can do it. Just because you didn't know how to do it doesn't mean you can't do it. It means you don't know how to do it, right? So to change your I can't to I can, you have to change how you feel or think about it, right? Right? So, so there's a, a, a decision, right? <laughs> so I had, to edit, I had to edit it, right? Edit it. I told her, I said, you can't. Do it like this. And so I edited what she said. I can't. I said, you can't. And she did it. Amen? So then she could say, I can't. Actually, I made her say, I can. <laughs> okay? Because I didn't want her going through life uh, building the, that, that doctrine that says, I can't, 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 I can't. I just feel the presence of the Lord right now. I have to stop for a second. And I have to ask the question, what have you been saying you can't do that you actually can do? Amen? What, what is it that you've been saying you can't do that you actually can do? Uh, uh, oh God, help me to do it. Amen? Help me to do it. I'm making a decision today to do what you said I should do. Amen? Amen? I give you my life. I give you my heart. Uh, so then there's action, right? The first thing is choice. i got to make a decision. The second thing is action, right? Uh, uh, reach hither thy finger. <laughs> Come on, Thomas. Reach. Re give me your finger. Take your finger. I, I almost see Jesus going like this. Come on. Come on, Thomas. And, and, and taking his hand and saying, stick it in there, Thomas. Do, do it, Thomas. Touch. Feel the, the hole in my, in my wrist. Feel, feel the thrust your hand in my side. I want you to be believing. Amen? Believing. <laughs> I, uh, someone sent me a, 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 a little meme thing. He says, uh, um, uh, uh, it was a welcome mat, but it says, uh, 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 hope you, uh, d no, don't stop. Believing <laughs> is what the Matt said. You want instead of a welcome mat? So, 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 so don't stop here. <laughs> believing, right? <laughs> so, believing. Like, like sometimes we got to leave stuff to believe stuff. Amen? Amen? So, 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 the, <laughs> the, the, the thing I want to ask you, okay, what action should you be taking right now? Right now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Now is when I have to take action. Amen? Right now. Right now. This moment. Uh, 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 <laughs> or, or how about this? Is this action that I'm taking based on fear or faith? Is it fear or faith? Is it fear or faith? Is it fear or faith? I have to take action, right? Uh, uh, do I need to edit my behavior? Ooh, that's a good question. I think we should look in the mirror right now. <laughs> Pastor Everett, do I, do you need to edit your behavior? See, see, because if I can be that kind of person where I, I, I then trust God with a different action, I will get a different result. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. The image I behold is the image I become. If I'm looking at Jesus, I'll look just like him. If I'm looking at the world, I'm going to look like the world. If I look at my past, I'll just keep repeating what happened in the past. Huh? Jesus, you know, we, we talked about this, but Jesus uh, did, his first miracle was a wedding. His last miracle was a, uh, a canceled funeral. Okay? But at his first miracle in John chapter 2, uh, Jesus confronted lack. They had no wine. They had no wine at the wedding. Jesus didn't have any grapes. He didn't, even, he didn't have the, the, the mash. You know, if you make wine, you've got to have this uh, stuff. It takes like nine months to have. It's, a, it's like a mix that you have to have to, to make good wine. Jesus didn't have that. He didn't have time, and he didn't have any grapes. <laughs> He had water. And Jesus took uh, and defied the laws of, uh, uh, of everything. Because miracles always 
defy every law of logic that you can possibly have. He, 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 he disbanded. There was, time didn't matter. What, what would you do in your life if time didn't matter? <laughs> what, what would you do with your life if substance didn't matter? You don't got no grapes? Say it with me. Say, I don't got no grapes, Pastor Everett. <laughs> but I got Jesus. Hey, Amen? So if I got Jesus, I got... I got the grapes I need. <laughs> I like that. And we said, she says, I got grapes. If I got Jesus, I got everything I need. I don't have lack. That's the thing. That's the thing. So we're always looking at what we don't have. But start looking at what you do have. You got Jesus. You got God living inside of you. You got the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. Amen. When I go to the circumstance, Jesus is right there with me. He's omnipresent. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want what? Anything. Anything. What do you mean? Why is that going to Because your focus is wrong. You're not at the feet of Jesus like you should be. You're not in your word like you should be. You're not in your worship like you should be. You got, you got your focus wrong. You, you got to take action today. This is a call to action, right? You know, you know, they say that at that first miracle Jesus did in John chapter 2, it was 108 to 180 gallons, gallons of wine. <laughs> That's a lot of wine. <laughs> we, he could have started a packaging plant. <laughs> That's a lot of wine. That, they went from having nothing to having abundance. Yes. They went from nothing. See, 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 see. I wonder if we could see our life like this. I, I don't got nothing, but I got an abundance. I, 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 what's the perspective shift, right? It's an action that I have to do in my own life. Amen? I got to say, you know what? I got more than enough. Yes. Ephesians 3, 17 through 20 says uh, that, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able, Paul's praying here, the, the, that you may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height. And verse 19, and to know the love of Christ, which pass, passes knowledge, that, it, that, that ye might be filled with the, all the fullness of God. So there's three words, three key words there. I, I'm, I don't have, I'm not preaching from that verse. I just want to show you something. Uh, uh, dwell, comprehend, Right? And know. See, see when, I, when, when I know that Christ is dwelling in me, I comprehend things different. I, I act different, right? And, and then I know <laughs> the devil can't have me or my family. This is an eviction notice to the enemy. Devil, you got to get out of my family. Amen. Devil, you got to get out of my house. Devil, you got to get out of my finances. Devil, you got to get out of my relationship. Yep. Devil, when I go to work, you better be afraid because I, when I get to work, you better not be there. Amen? The, the whole atmosphere is about to change when I walk in the room. Amen? Because when I walk in the room, the Holy Spirit walks in with me. You know, I, I read all that, but I want, uh, the only thing I want to, I, want, I don't have time to give you all this, okay, but I want to give you a little something anyways, because you're here and I'm here and Holy Spirit's here. Uh, uh, Ephesians 3.21 says, Unto Him be glory in the church. Yes. Unto Him, unto, unto Jesus be the glory. Amen? See, 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 have you given glory to Jesus? Not just in your mind? But in your relationships, how about in the world, right? Glory to Jesus. Uh, uh, career takes work. A calling just takes an ear to hear. So, so give me ears to hear, God. Give me ears to hear. See, <laughs> I want you to say this with me. No grapes? No, grapes. no problem. No problem. Just, obey. just obey. This is pretty, pretty weak right there. Let's do it again so that somebody else can say it. <laughs> yeah. Y'all can do better than that. <laughs> Say, no grapes. No problem. I'm going to obey. Amen? Right? 
Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's shift it. No time? No problem. No I'm going to obey. Amen? Amen? I got time. Amen? I got time to give glory to God. Okay, let me give you the third thing, and then I'm almost done after that. Right? The third thing, uh, we have, to, we ha- we have a, a, a choice to make, we have an action to do, and then we have uh, feelings. 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 Feelings is the last thing. You, you don't... S- <laughs> When, when a baby's born, a mama goes through a lot of pain. It doesn't feel good. But immediately after the baby is born and they put the baby on the mama, she don't remember the pain. She remembers the feeling. I love you. See? See, so feelings are last. I can't always go on my feelings, right? If, if, if I'm going to trust God to get me out of, uh, out of Egypt... I ain't going to feel good on the way out of Egypt. I'm telling you right now because I don't want to go out of Egypt. I like Egypt. I, I, I don't really like that they're tormented and torturing me. and all. Blah, 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 blah. But to get out of that cycle, it's going to be uncomfortable to get out of cycles. Don't, don't trust your feelings. Trust God. I trust in God. My Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. How do you know you'll never fail? I read my Bible. I saw that God never fails. I saw that it didn't matter uh, what, what, what Pilate said. He said, he said, he said, don't you know I got the power to set you free or I got the power to kill you? And Jesus says to him, he says, you don't have any power at all unless it was given to you from above. Oh, I, I, I read about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said, O king, we are not careful how we answer you in this matter. Uh, whether our God will deliver us or not, we don't know. But we know this. We're not bowing our knee to you. Hallelujah. It don't feel good sometimes. Feelings come after. Amen. Sometimes when you come here to worship, you've got to just lift your hands and worship anyway. I gotta give you praise anyways, God. Hey, I know that you're the you're the, the first and the last. You're above and, and far beyond everything I can ever ask or imagine. You can do all of that, God. Uh, I don't have any grapes today, God. <laughs> but you're the God of no lack. Yeah. I feel like I'm running out of time, God. But it's no problem because you don't, you're not even in time. God is not even in. Did you know? Did you know? Uh, in eternity, there is no past and there is no future. There is only presence. This is such a good thing to know. If, 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 if I'm only in the presence of God, I, I'm, I've got God working on my behalf now. I don't have to go backwards and I don't have to go forwards. I'm in the presence of God. Hey, hey God, God is present. They, what did he say? He's a present help in time of need (laughs) a career takes work calling takes an ear to hear Uh, David said it better than I can say it in Psalms 103 he said bless the Lord O my soul my mind my will and my emotions better bless the Lord that's what he said Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. That means there's there's some stuff in me. Uh, David had some stuff in him. Uh, There's some circumstances. There's some some things i got to deal with in my past. There's some uh, uh, stuff in my past. But i got to bless the Lord. i got to make a decision to bless the Lord. Like David, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. He says it two times. And forget not all his benefits. What? (sighs) When is the last time? We just got through Thanksgiving just a couple days ago. Did you make a list 
of all the things you have to be thankful for? Or did you only make the list of all the things you're lacking? Because last time I checked, God gave me breath in my body. God gave me a gift. God gave you a gift. And thank you, Lord, for the gift. Thank you, Lord, for, the, for blessing me with this life. Ah, some people don't even have the ability to do the things I can do. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Some people don't even have anybody in their life at all that loves them. Thank you, Jesus, for the people in my life that love me. Thank you for, uh, uh, maybe, I don't know, for this church. Thank you, Lord, for this church. Thank you for, uh, for, for provision. I ate something yesterday. Thank you, Lord. I got these, this new pair of pants on. Thank you, Lord, for this new pair of pants. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I got a couple hairs in my head yet. Some of y'all don't have enough. <laughs> I got more hair than you, God. I got more hair than you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for what I have. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Make a list of what you need to be thankful for. Maybe just write up down uh, a list of ten things. And the next time you start getting all pretty pity party about something, oh, my feelings. Change your feelings by being thankful for all the things that God has given you, all the things that he's done in your life. I remember back when God answered that prayer. I remember back when I didn't have nothing and God brought somebody along. I remember when I couldn't afford anything. I remember when the bank came and took everything. I remember I remember when uh, somebody sat across the desk for me and said to me, he said, uh, uh, Everett, you seem like a really nice guy, but I just want you to know nobody's ever going to bring you something to eat. But they didn't know about Sister Edwin. Get not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, all the sin on the inside. Man. <laughs> Paul says, he, he says, Oh, wretched man that I am, who can deliver me from this body of death, right? Who can take this away from me? He said, he said Bless the Lord. David said, uh, Bless the Lord, all my. Who, who forgive not all his benefits, who forgiveth me of all of my iniquities, all the stuff on the inside, all the confusion, all the regret, all the things on the inside, who healeth all my diseases, who redeemeth my life from destruction and crowneth crown thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle's. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all those that are oppressed. Your mind, your will, and your emotions must come into alignment. Amen? They are being changed, okay? But don't trust your feelings, okay? Your decision and your actions are not based on your feelings. The minute you base your actions and your decisions on your feelings, you missed it. Amen? It's bigger than, you, than how you feel about it. I want, I want you to, to say that with me. It's bigger, it's bigger than what I feel about it. Because if I did what I feel about it, somebody's going to die. <laughs> Let's go to Judea. Right? Let's go there. Let's go to the place where God is praised. Amen? Where he gets the glory. Amen? Let, let's go there. Amen? Let, let's not go, uh, let's not go uh, and keep giving the devil more and more and more and more praise. Let's go there. Uh, he shall be free. Out of my lips, out of my mouth, I will praise him. Out of my mouth, I'll praise him. Hey, 
Say, say this with me. Say, edit, edit. It. it. How many of you would like to go back in your life and edit something out? Amen? Say, say, Jesus, man, <laughs> can you just not, can you just take, blah, blah, take it out? <laughs> what we say about it is relative to our understanding of it. Come on. What we say about it, what we feel about it, what we do about it is relative to our understanding of it. Okay? And so, so, 12 hours in a day, a man is appointed to work. 12 hours. I had one pastor one time got up and preached a sermon. He said, if you ain't working 12 hours a day, you're not giving your whole day to the Lord. <laughs> I, I'm going to say this. If, if the light is in you, you got 24 hours in a day. If you're not giving 24 hours in a day, you're not giving your life to the Lord. Okay? But this is the appointed time. This is the appointed work. This is the, uh, the appointed time called now. What are you doing now is the question I have for you. Now, 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 now. Like, 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 uh, when, when is it going to be time? When is now time for you? When, when are you going to move now, right? When, when are you going to make that phone call? Now. Like, sometimes I get these calls. They come in and I'm like, uh, <laughs> decline. <laughs> I'll call them later. <laughs> I don't want to call him. I don't want to talk to. I don't want to talk to Edwin. You know, no, mm -mm. I didn't get that call. I'll leave him unread. <laughs> when is the now going to be though? Right, tomorrow. Like the frogs, right? <laughs> Pharaoh, when do you want the frogs to go away? Tomorrow, about this time. Oh, tomorrow. Oh, okay. Spend another twenty-four hours with a frog. Okay. Now. Say it with me now. Do you know we have opposition now? But we also have opportunity now. Yes, Amen? Amen? What's greater? I don't know, Pastor Everett. There's a verse, I think, somewhere that says, uh, uh, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Uh, see, see, because what happens in our life is, is, is we, 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 we fight that back and forth, right? But it says in 2 Timothy 1, verse 7, does anybody know what that verse says? For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So, so, so when I'm like, oh God, I don't know what's going on! That's not a sound mind. But when I do something now, based on the Word of God, that's having faith. Because I know that I have power and love and a sound mind. And I have all that I need already to do whatever it is God called me to do now. Amen? Amen. 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 So we're almost done. We're almost done. Jesus said Lazarus was sleeping. He said he was sleeping. Did, did you know that even if you're dead, you're in presence of God. <laughs> Did you know that? So we, we think death is final. It's just presence with God. It's present. It doesn't matter, dead or alive. I'm, I'm in the presence of God. What's, what's better? Uh, Paul said, it's better that I, I go with Jesus, but it's better for you if I stay here with, with you, you with y'all, right? I want to stay here with y'all, but because... Cause, cause, because it's better to be with Jesus. It's better to be, say, say this with me, it's better to be with Jesus. In the presence of Jesus is fullness of joy. Right? Okay. Here we are limited by time, but where God is, there is only presence. Right? Uh, 
uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, verse 19, it says something really powerful. It says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we of all men are most miserable. Are you miserable? It's because you don't have hope in Christ. Amen? No matter what this world throws at you, I've got hope in Christ. Amen? No matter what they said, i got hope in Christ. No matter what it looks like, i got hope in Christ because I believe that He is able. Amen? I believe it. Mary, Mary, Mary's memorial, remember that from a couple weeks ago? Mary's memorial? Uh, misery loved company, okay? Because uh, all the other people in the room were, were pointing their finger at Mary and Jesus rejected everybody else in the room and He accepted Mary's love. He, he stuck up for her, right? Everybody else was, uh, was, was like, yeah, yeah, Does that ever feel, do you ever feel like that? Yeah. Huh? I do sometimes too. Yeah. I'm up here all by myself. <laughs> and sometimes you've got to go somewhere all by yourself. But God is with you, regardless of what everybody else says. Right. Amen? Amen. My, my life, let my life be a memorial to Jesus, right? A, a declaration of love not independence. Amen? How many of you can say that with me? Say, I need Jesus. I need him. I need him. I need him. Maybe we could say, say, say this together. Say, say Father, Father I, don't I don't ever want to do it without you. Help me to remember that every day in every circumstance. I depend, I depend on you. On you. Amen. 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 So, so uh, uh, I'm, I'm done. I just have one more thing, and then I'll be really done, and I'll like walk off and leave you. But I, I, it's very important, just what I have to say. I want you to pay attention. I said all of that just to say this. This is the message. In Acts chapter 4, verse 13, uh, Peter and John went to the temple at the time of prayer. On the way, they saw a man who was lame. He couldn't, his feet didn't work, right? And, and he, said, he, he said, Peter said, he said, look on me, look at me. He said, he said silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And he took hold of him, and he lifted him up, and it says immediately, his feet and his ankle bones regained strength. Here's a guy who couldn't walk. He couldn't walk that morning. He couldn't walk any morning before that day. And here he was, walking. And he wasn't just walking, he was jumping up and down, worshiping and praising God, okay? I don't know if he was worshiping and praising God before that, but he was worshiping and praising God after that because something changed in his life that he received through the hand of Peter because faith was present in the moment. Faith activates the presence of God for miracles to happen in our life. Amen? So, so he said, he said uh, uh, there was somebody else, okay, so they bring the Peter and John uh, before the council, and they look at him, and they said, uh, uh, and, now, and, and, and it says something really powerful. I just, I'm, not, I'm not preaching a message from him. I just want to show you something. In, in verse X4, verse 13, it says, And now when they saw the boldness of Peter, why was Peter bold? Why was he bold? Because God did something through him that was impossible. Peter became bold. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. This, this, is, the, this is the gospel working out of your life, right? Like, like are you bold enough to, to declare something? But, uh, okay. And when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived 
that they were unlearned and ignorant. <laughs> Pastor Everett, you're stupid. Okay, good. Pastor Everett, it looks like you're not learned. Good. You, you see, you see. Peter and John had to unlearn what these other guys knew. So then they said, you're unlearned. And then it says, it says uh, they marveled and took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. With Jesus. Whenever you get in the presence of Jesus, someone else will take notice of you. They will marvel at you, but they ought to see your boldness. Amen? They ought to see your boldness. Right? Uh, <laughs> say this with me. Say, who cares, who cares? What, they think? what they think? Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Who cares what they think? Yeah. Who cares what they think? Yeah. Verse 14. This is the best part. And beholding... The man which was healed, standing with them, they could say nothing against it. <laughs> you guys are ignorant. And Peter's like, this is the guy, not Peter. This is the guy next to him. <laughs> He's like, Peter's like, I don't have to argue with you all at all. You'll, you'll say what you want. I got evidence. See, see, there's a difference, right? When I get evidence inside of me, I don't care what other, everybody else thinks. I love you, Jesus. <laughs> I got some evidence. I got some evidence. I got some. <sighs> Revival starts when I stop caring what everybody else thinks and I start believing inside. That, that what he has done in me is greater than anything that's ever going to happen to me in, in, in the future, that ever happened to me in the past, when, when, I, when I get the evidence on the inside, when I really understand that, when I understand that, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come, Jesus said, that you might have life, that you ha might have it more abundantly, right? That means that there's more abundance than what I've already got. I might have something right now, but God has got something greater in mind for my life. He wants to work through my life and do something powerful. <laughs> okay, stand with me. We're going to be done. I'm just going to pray. Just stand with me. Whew. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lisa. Just say this with me. Say, Father, Father I, declare I declare my love for you. Love you. I, thank you I thank you for my life. For my life. I, thank you I thank you for my witness. Come and touch me from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. Forgive me, Lord. Help me to be everything that you called me to be. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Amen? Amen. So let me just, let me just, stop, stop, let me just start, stop right here, but start something, okay? I want, I want you to, 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 to not just go out the same way you came in. I want you to, to not go out based on how you feel about it, okay? Not, by, not, not about how you feel about it. It's about the action that you're going to take right now, okay? And the Bible says in uh, Romans 10, verse 9, it says, With the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, and whosoever believeth is not ashamed. So I, I want, if that, that's you, and you're not going to be ashamed. I want you to walk up 
and just slap that all. Remember last week someone came up and they slapped altar a bunch of times. And I was thinking to myself, that's just like what I do. That's just like what I do. I slap, I make noise, okay? I'm a, I'm a noisy person, right? When it comes to my worship, when it comes to my preaching, when it comes to my praise, whenever I get in the presence of God, I make noise, okay? Amen? So I want you to do that. I want you to just uh, uh, respond to the message. Come up here and say, you know what? I got something to do. Slap, slap, slap. Thank you, Jesus. And then go and do what God has called you. But don't go with fear. Go with power, knowing that you have power. Amen? God has given you power through the Holy Spirit to change not just your life, but somebody else's life. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 So God, God bless you. I, I, I hope that all y'all had a, had a good Thanksgiving. And uh, there, there are folks all around the world right now that are watching us. And uh, I'm excited for, for Breakthrough Family. I'm excited for breakthroughs for all of you. I decree and declare that there are breakthroughs coming in your life. Amen? I decree and declare that you will, your life will never be the, cha- the same after today. Amen? Today is the turning point. Amen? Let today be the day the Lord has made. Let this be the now that you're called to for a new life. Amen? For a new change. Amen? For a new focus. Amen? But it starts when we get in the presence of God. Amen? Let's go there together in the presence of God. Amen. God bless you.